This is the second in a series of videos on pyuresis, better known as shy bladder syndrome. Hopefully you've watched the first video already, so we'll have a good understanding of what pyuresis is. If you haven't, click on the link to the first video appearing at the top of the screen now. In this video, I'm going to explain what safety behaviours are and why they make pyuresis much worse. A safety behaviour is something that you do to prevent something that you fear happening. In the case of pyuresis, you fear people noticing that you are unable to urinate when there are other people around. So you develop safety behaviours to prevent people from finding out. The number and type of safety behaviours you have will be proportionate to your level of fear. Here are some examples of safety behaviours. Trying to find the quietest public toilet. Limiting fluid intake so you do not need to use a public toilet. Watching the entrance to a public toilet to make sure no one goes in before you. Only staying at social events as long as your bladder can hold it in. Waiting until all friends have been to the toilet before you go. Using public toilets only at times you think it most likely that they'll be empty. Using alcohol or drugs to temporarily relieve the anxiety when you have to use a public toilet. Not going out at all. These behaviours seem sensible to people who suffer from pyuresis, but here is why they are a problem. The part of the brain that deals with danger does not learn from books. It learns from the danger signals that it gets from you. All these safety behaviours signal that not being able to urinate is a genuine danger. So the anxious brain now triggers various mechanisms in the body to deal with that danger, including holding the urethral sphincter closed to stop you urinating. It may also increase your heart rate, make you shake and give you an overwhelming urge to flee. The paradox is that the more safety behaviours you have, the less likely you will be able to urinate around others. What you are doing to protect yourself is actually making your pyuresis worse. An important first step in treating pyuresis is reducing these safety behaviours. This is best done as part of a package of cognitive behavioural therapy guided by a trained therapist who understands pyuresis. However, if you are unable to access therapy, I am going to explain in this video series how to use the different tools in CBT to help reduce the severity of your pyuresis and increase the number of situations and toilets where you are able to urinate. Reducing safety behaviours can help retrain the anxious part of your mind that is stopping you urinating, but it has to be done gradually and systematically, otherwise the anxiety can be overwhelming and counterproductive. It also must be done in conjunction with other exercises and tools I will show you in this video series. So let's get started. Firstly, make a list of all your safety behaviours with the easiest ones to give up at the top and the hardest ones at the bottom. Then choose the easiest safety behaviour at the top of your list. Maybe it's one that you have only recently started doing. Over the next few weeks, try to give up that safety behaviour. For example, if you always watch the toilet entrance, sit facing away from the entrance so you can't see if anyone has gone in. Don't beat yourself up if you give in to your safety behaviour. Just keep trying until you are confident that this safety behaviour has become a thing of the past. Then move on to the next one on your list and repeat the process. Eliminating safety behaviours is really tough and it will take you many months and for some people even years. And you might still be left with a few that you just can't give up. However, the less you have, the easier it will be to urinate in more situations and places and the less restricted your life will be by pyuresis. Just think, People who don't have pyuresis related safety behaviours don't have pyuresis. That's just how the brain works. In the next video I'm going to show you how to deal with the negative thoughts that drive safety behaviours which will make it easier to start reducing your safety behaviours. There is also a tool in video 4 that will help you. The link to the next video in the series should appear right about now.